You're listening to the Creatorpreneur Podcast, Episode 18, and today we're talking about three questions you must ask yourself before you create your next profitable list building freebie. So stay tuned. Hello, my name is Rodney Washington, author, artist, and entrepreneur, and I'm passionate about helping creatives just like you do what lights you up and make a comfortable living while doing it. Each week, I'll be sharing timely business growth, marketing, and mindset hacks and interviews with courageous creative entrepreneurs to inspire you to get paid for your creativity. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and enjoy today's show. Today's episode is sponsored by my free downloadable PDF checklist, How to Create a Highly Irresistible List Building Freebie and Attract Your Perfect Customers the Easy Way. Stop guessing what your ideal audience wants and start filling your email list with buy-ready people actively searching for your digital products, online courses, artwork, workshops, retreats, and one-on-one services. To grab your copy, visit my website at getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash freebie checklist. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so glad to have you back this week. You know, I created this series this month and dedicated the month of July to creating your own creative and financial independence. And for online entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs who do business online, this building and getting creating an audience creating that turns into leads that begin that will turn into clients and customers uh, starts with building an email list. And while as I've said in other episodes, if you've been listening to the series, building an email list is obviously one of the cornerstone things that you will be doing as you're marketing your business online. But as I mentioned in most of the episodes, all of the episodes in this series, especially the one I did last week with Daniel Largo, pet behavior, pet behaviorist Daniel Largo, where we talked about quizzes and assessments, building the right list. Build, and what I mean by the right list is I mean the right people, the people who actually actively have an issue or a desire that they want and they're looking for a solution. And when they come across your solution, your first step solution, which is what we're talking about in the series this month on building an irresistible freebie, um, that, that thing that you put out there, that, that first offer has to speak to that, to them in order for that person who's reading it to receive it and immediately say, this is what I've been looking for, or at least this is a step in the right direction. And by clearly defining that by, by stating that very clearly when they see your opt-in page or they see your social media posts where you talking about, the issue that your uh, ideal customer avatar, as I'm going to be speaking about in this episode, addresses when they see that video or that post or whatever it is that you put out there and they see a step, a next step option that they can take in order to get that information, whatever that is, be it a quiz or an ebook or whatever, as we've been talking about in this series, when they see that, they will instantly the ones that you want to attract are the ones who read that and instantly say to themselves, this is what I've been looking for, or at least this is a step in the right direction. And then they will click through from say that social media post, maybe that Instagram story or that Facebook post or whatever, whatever it was, how they found you and go over and enter their name and email address in order to be able to get that information from you. So while the other episodes in this series, I've talked about, the different types of freebies that you can do. I've talked about success I've had with certain freebies I've created. And I introduced you in episode 17 uh, to Daniel Largo and what she's doing as a pet behaviorist and building her email list with quizzes and assessments. I felt it was important to kind of step it back a little bit, take it back a little bit and start to really deep dive into the what And what I mean by the what is not just what the thing is you're going to give them, be it the ebook or the quiz or whatever, but what is the issue that the person that you are wanting to attract, what I call your ideal customer, customer avatar, what is the issue that they have that your irresistible freebie is going to call out to them? And by getting clear on the what, 
it actually will define the freebie. And also that's what's going to make it irresistible. So in this episode, episode 18, and in the next episode, episode 19, we're going to really spend some time deep diving into the what, meaning the problem, the issue, and then the how, and who is going to be the person that's going to want this. And so we're going to deep dive into that in both episodes, but I'm going to start the conversation in this episode by helping you, as you've been listening to this series, to start asking yourself some important questions that will help you define what that is, the what and the who. So we're going to go into that. I'm going to go into the three steps right here, and then I'm going to give you some some things that you can consider. I'm going to also say to go to the show notes, which is going to be located on getpaidforyourcreativity.com forward slash 018 for episode 18. And you will see all of the, the bullet points I'm laying out in the podcast there, which you can go over and copy and paste and use in your own document to be able to answer those questions and start to get your mind thinking about this because it's going to segue seamlessly into what I'm going to talk about in episode 19, which is going to be around choosing the right niche. And what I mean by that is a niche that is profitable. And we're going to talk about that in a great and much more depth in episode 19. But for this one, we're going to focus on these three questions and I'm going to give you some bullet points to consider. And then I'm going to send you over to the show notes to go and get all of this and then start working on this, um, this information. Now, before I go into that, I want to encourage you to connect with me over on Instagram. I have my Instagram handle here also in the show notes, which is creatorpreneur podcast and send me a DM. I look at, I will look for DMs at least twice a day. And I will respond to you. So share with me what you came up with. You can share with me the results of the, uh, the, 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 the questions I posed to you and what you came up with. And I will address it back. And I possibly may even feature you in the next episode of the podcast by giving you a shout out. So if you put your handle in there, obviously you will. I'll also give you a shout out on the handle and also put your link inside the show notes for episode 19. So this is an opportunity, hint, hint, <laughs> to uh, to participate and get some um, some free publicity, I guess, if you will. So I'm really excited about that. So, and also before I get into the three questions, I would love it if you would go over to iTunes and rate and review the show. If you've been enjoying what you've been hearing, this helps more people find the show and helps more people like you who want and need the information and the education and the resources that I'm sharing with you. So head over to iTunes. The link is also inside the show notes to go over there and rate and review the show and leave a comment. And again, I just may feature you in the next episode and give you a shout out. So anyway, so let's go right into it. So here are the three questions you must ask yourself before you create your next profit driven list building freebie. The first thing, number one, is you need to ask yourself this question. Do I know my ideal avatar's top of mind problem? And I'll repeat that. Do I know my ideal avatar's top of mind problem? And this is the one that they most want to have solved. And if I know this, do I know how they're languaging it, how they're talking about it? So in order for your, the first step in order for your freebie to be irresistible, it must, it must speak to this, your headline, how you language, how you talk about it, the subject you give it, all of that is going to affect when the potential person that would be take value, get value from this, they must see in themselves what you've, they must see in themselves how you've languished the problem. And I'm going to give some examples in a little bit, but this is really important. Do you know your ideal avatar's top of mind problem is the thing that they're thinking about? So let's say in the case of what we, we discussed last week on last week's episode with Danielle, She deals with behavioral issues, particularly with dogs. One of the issues that she deals with with her clients is dogs who have met puddles on the floor. So peeing on the carpet, so to speak. So if she spoke about that specifically in her in her freebie or as an issue that she can solve in her freebie, 
if someone's dealing with a dog that has an issue with no matter how much you try to potty train, they still puddle on the floor. If the title or the subject of the freebie calls that out and I have that issue and I read that, if I'm her ideal avatar, I'm going to pay attention to that. That's going to make me stop in the news feed. That's going to make me, or if it's, you know, however it's been put out there marketing wise, that's going to make me at least stop and capture my attention. And that's the first step. You know, the rules of copywriting, which I've been studying quite a bit about copywriting, and I actually do write copy for, uh, for a couple of clients. One of the things that in email marketing in particular, it can be also a sales page or even an opt-in page where your freebie will be distributed. The, the first thing, the first most important line in your copy is the headline. Now, the headline isn't designed to sell the product straight out, like they read the headline, then go to the buy button and purchase it. The headline is to sell the second line. And the second line is designed to sell the third line and so on and so on and so forth as you read through the copy. So that's why you can put together something which we're going to talk about in a future future episode about the construction of an actual opt-in page. The first thing you're going to want to do and why I want to spend some time deep, deep diving into this before we get to those that part of the part of the, the, the story, if you will, is that headline is the number one thing. And the only way that you can really get clarity about how to position and talk about and language that headline is to get clear about the actual top of mind problem or desire that the person that your irresistible freebie would actually be drawn to. So that's why I'm sp spending some time focusing on this in this and also in the next episode, in the next episode, episode 19. And so again, they can have a myriad of problems. They can have a variety of different issues, but you want to find out the one thing, the number one thing that if they feel like if I get this one solved, I'll be able to then tackle the other ones, or that may be it for me. That's all I really need. That's all I want. So again, you, and I'm, we're going to talk more in depth about how to get that information. If you don't already have it, meaning you're working with people already. You're able to talk to them directly and ask them questions and interview them. Again, we're going to deep dive into this more in episode 19. But this is where you can start to do some things that I talked about in episode 14, I believe, or I'm sorry, 15, I believe. I'm going to share that with you in the show notes on how to research to find out what the issues are or potential issues are that someone that you might be commenting about or searching for to get a solution to that problem. So again, talking to someone you've already worked with directly is always the best. If you can't get that, then people that you've not worked with, but you know has the issue that you can talk to. And then third is researching different forums. Like I mentioned, uh, different platforms like Udemy and I mentioned Amazon and some other sources, Facebook groups and things like that, where you can potentially start to get that information. So we'll go back to question number one. Do I know my ideal avatar's top of mind problem, the one they most want to have solved, and do I know how they're languaging it? Now, again, that is key. How they actually phrase it, the way they actually say it, is really important because in good copywriting, you are mirroring back how what someone, what people, someone is saying and how they're saying it. Not so much how they're saying it, but what they're saying, like the literal words that they're saying uh, without getting too graphic here. But let's use the dog puddling on the floor. If someone is struggling with their dog urinating on the floor, they might use the the P word. <laughs> I want to keep this uh, PG so I won't, you know, but I, you can get what I'm saying by urinating. They might say, I want how to stop my dog from peeing on my floor. They might even go more graphic than that. So, uh, but how do I get my dog to stop doing this? And then you're thinking, say, three, three easy steps to um, retrain your dog to, or, or better potty train your dog. Something really literal, literal like that. So by going out and talking to people and doing research and you see people actually writing those words out, you actually want to mirror those words and use them in your headline in order to capture their attention. 
So knowing how to language it is really important. Number two, what is the best possible solution I can give them to address that problem and get them a quick, valuable win? So again, whatever, you know, besides the headline that captures their attention and then gets them to entices them to opt in, you also need to promise in that initial offering before they give you the email address, before they give you the contact information, what is the quick win they're gonna get right away? So maybe using the dog peeing on the floor scenario, maybe you can say in your your copy, because again, we're talking about the headline sells the second line, the second line sells the third line and so on and so forth. So if you say in one of those bullet points, say one, one, food item, if this is the truth, of course, you don't want to make stuff up, but, um, you know, one, one thing, one food item that you can stop feeding your or giving your dog that will eliminate or dramatically reduce the urge to urinate on the floor by a certain percentage. Now, again, we're not, you don't want to make anything up here. But if you do know of one thing that you can do that will eliminate or dramatically cut it back, you want to position that as a curiosity statement. So if I'm reading the headline about how to stop my dog from urinating on the floor, and then I see one of the bullet points is one thing I can stop giving them that will dramatically reduce the, the, op, the, uh, the options or the opportunity that they will continue doing this, that's ratcheting up the curiosity, which is ratcheting up the probability that that person that has that top of mind problem is going to give me the contact information to get my freebie. So you see how this works. So whatever it is, again, you're, and a lot of what I'm saying here today is setting up what I'm gonna talk about in episode 19, which is about choosing your niche audience, your niche market, or choosing your niche, really. Because this needs to be something that you know. You can't make this up. You've got to know what it is that you solve, and you've got to know the secrets, the insider tips and tricks and and, and recipes and formulas and whatever it is that's going to help them get a portion of the solution that they seek. And by knowing what you're talking about, knowing what you're doing, knowing how to language it, you can word it in your bullet points that you also have on your opt-in page where someone's gonna read that to potentially opt in for your freebie, then you will dramatically increase the chances that they're going to want to opt in if for nothing more than to get that quick win. And if they experience that quick valuable win, the chances are that you they're going to go deeper with you because if you help solve this one piece that automatically positions your paid offer, which we're going to talk about that more in a moment, the quick win positions the paid offer, but you've got to give them something that they can feel like, wow, I'm so glad I got this taken care of. If I got this taken care of, what else can they show me how to do? You see how this works. So this moves, moves right on to number three. Will the result of that QVW, acronym for Quick Valuable Win, inspire them to take action on my next step, which means investing in your paid product, pay, I'm sorry, paid product or service. So if I have a series of, say, training videos that I have that deal with all kinds of issues that my dog could be having, again, using this example, let's say if the dog is peeing on the rug, there's a chance that it could possibly be barking at uh, the door, the neighbors chasing, uh, maybe possibly being aggressive, uh, digging, digging, tearing up, uh, 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 chewing furniture up, toys, uh, not listening to commands. There's a real possibility that there are a myriad of other issues that this particular, this one issue, because which is really a symptom. So, a dog with an issue of peeing on the carpet is doing that in response to a, an issue that's not being addressed. And it's one way to call out attention. With that in mind, I have no doubt that there are other behavioral issues that this dog is doing, not just the peeing on the carpet. 
So if I, if you help me solve that first issue, which is the peeing on the carpet, and I opt in and you show me how to do that and I do it, and then you lead me to what your paid offer is, which is uh, a result of other issues that this particular situation could be going through, then you are setting it up so that I would be more enticed to want to go to your sales page or pick up the phone and call you for a consultation or ultimately purchase what you're selling. So that's why this is so important. So let me just review these real quick. Number one, do I know my ideal avatar's top of mind problem, the one they most want to have solved, and do I know how they're languaging it or talking about it? Number two, what is the big, the best possible solution I can give them to address that problem immediately and get them a quick, valuable win right away? As soon as they, as soon as they opt in, they can go and do this one thing and get a win, which sets up number three. Will the result of that quick, valuable win inspire them to take action on my next step, which could be leading towards investing in your paid product or service? So the reason why I want to put this episode together is because this this here, these questions and how you answer them is going to help you define the framework for your profit driven freebie. So before you create anything, before you start deciding on a checklist or a quiz or an ebook or an audio series or whatever, you want to address these questions first. You want to have this so top, so clear in your head that when you decide to create the deliverable that the person's going to get for giving you their contact information, it's going to hit every single point and it's going to ratchet up the possibility and probability that they're going to give you the information to get them on your list, to give them the thing that they've asked for, to help them get the quick win, which then directly leads to the paid offer or product that you're offering. And that all this all starts with answering those three questions. That's why I say these are three of the most important questions that you must ask yourself. So again, before you create anything, get clear on the ideal avatar, and the problem they most want solved. And here are some ways to do this. And I mentioned some of this a moment ago, but I'm going to go into it again. Interview your ideal customer and ask them what they're struggling with and the problem they most want to have solved. Don't make it up. Find people that have the issue. Go to where those people hang out. It could be Facebook groups. It could be, I think Facebook Facebook groups can be great. It could be forums. Um... You know, you don't want to pitch yourself in terms of wanting to um, maybe interview people in the groups. You've got to get group permission in order to be able to do that. Facebook groups, some frown on frown on that and consider it self-promotion. But if you see a conversation happening where people are commenting back and forth, and they're talking about a particular issue and you know how to solve that, you could also offer to DM people. And ask them to message you privately. That's DM for direct message and message them privately and ask them without saying, I'm trying to sell anything. Cause at this stage you aren't, you're saying I'm putting something together that helps people solve fill in the blank with whatever the thing is that you do. And I'm looking uh, to interview some people to really find out what's going on. Would you be open to hopping on a call with me for maybe 10, 15 minutes and just answering some questions? It could be longer than that, but you want to set it up where it doesn't feel too intrusive or too invasive. And there's a tool if you want to do telephone based recorded interviews called freeconferencecall.com. I'll put the link in the show notes and you can give them a, a number. You both down to the same number. You have a different access code than they do, and you can set up the call to record and you can just record the conversation. And we'll go into this more in depth as I'm talking about this. I want to go in more in depth on how to do an interview with someone. I'll do that in a future episode. But anyway, this is one of the best ways, in my opinion, to get the information that you need is to interview someone directly that has the issue. If you next option, if you already have an email list, obviously you can email them and ask them. If you can get on the phone with them for a phone conversation, that to me is best. I prefer that over doing surveys because surveys have to be finessed in a certain way to get people to do them. If you ask too many questions, 
or if you don't position the question in the right way, you may not get the results in the intel that you want. So if you have an email list already or people that you just know, maybe not a formal email list, but you have a list of people in your personal Rolodex that you know or suspect or have heard has the issue that your particular thing solves, um, I would email and ask or invite to if they'd be interested in doing an interview with you and then get on the phone and do it and record it. That would be the way I would do it over doing a uh, formal formulaic survey where they go in and fill in blanks and things like that because people sometimes won't always do them or they won't complete them. The next step, as I already mentioned, is you can check out and read reviews of competing products that your ideal customer avatar might refer to as an option or alternative to your paid product or service. As I mentioned in episode, I believe it was 16, I talked about uh, doing, I actually know it was episode 13, uh, the one I did on Ryan Levesque and his book, Choose. I actually created a video tutorial showing you how to use sites like Udemy and Skillshare and Amazon in order to research products similar to the one that you are going to create or you currently have and looking at and reading the reviews. This can give you a lot of intel about what people are feeling. And what I like about reviews over surveys is a survey is an ask where people may or may not write out and give you all the information, but a review is more emotional and people that will write a review are usually 99% of the time being very transparent and very upfront about what they like and what they don't like. So that's why I kind of put a little bit more credence towards reviews. Now, of course, if you can get that person that did the review on a, on a call, that's even better. But again, the reviews are a good place to at least get some cursory intel about where someone's head is at with this particular issue. So again, in episode 13, I'll put the link in the show notes. Uh, I have a video tutorial there on that episode that you can go and watch, and that will show you how to go into platforms like Udemy and Skillshare and Amazon and search for those reviews and also how to capture them in an Excel spreadsheet or a Google spreadsheet so that you'll have that actual person's words available to you that you can then use in naming your freebie and so on and so forth. And again, we're going to go into this much more in depth, including an exercise on writing that headline in episode 19 that's coming out next week. Another option is you can also search blogs or podcast and read the comments on those particular platforms. So people will sometimes write reviews on a podcast or they'll leave uh, comments on blog posts. And you can also read those there and see what people are saying. Sometimes some podcast hosts, for an example, have a Facebook group that connects to their podcast. That's something I'm considering doing myself. So if the podcast episode has a Facebook group or a Facebook page that connects to the show, check out the, and usually the links are going to be on the show notes, whatever show you're listening to. So I would check that out, go to the page, be it a Facebook group, if they have one or just a regular Facebook page and look at the comments that people write as it relates to that particular episode. And if you have something to contribute to the conversation, write that in the comments and then see who responds to it. That could be a way to get your first potential interviewees that you could do. So I'm going to run this over again really quickly. If you listen to podcasts, which you probably do if you listen to this one, find podcasts that relate to the particular issue that you address, the customer you solve, the customer issue you solve. Go and see if they have in the show notes for that episode, see if on that post they list links to their Facebook page and or Facebook group. Go check out those two things and see if that person posts each individual blog post, each podcast episode or link to a blog post as a post on their Facebook page or group. So that particular topic that you listen to or read and see what conversation is happening and then insinuate yourself by contributing to the conversation and do a little back and forth and then invite 
if you're getting good uh, engagement, invite someone through direct message to have a potential interview phone conversation with you. So that could be a way to use other people's platforms to find those first interviewees uh, that you could do. Now, with all of this being said, this is an important point that I want to make sure I uh, leave you with as I'm getting ready to wrap up this episode. Before you create anything, whatever it is, it doesn't matter if it's a checklist, ebook, audio program, whatever, it doesn't matter. Before you create anything, you obviously want to get clear about the issue, the problem you solve, and all of those things I've already mentioned in the three steps. But you also want to think and get clarity on where does this free offer lead to my paid offer? Now, the best way to do this is to get clarity about the paid offer first. Because what you want to do is you want your free offer to to segue seamlessly to the paid offer. As I mentioned in the example about the dog training, if I put out a free offer that helps someone dealing with a dog peeing on the carpet and I have some, some things I can give them, one, to help them stop that behavior right away, it's going to be pretty fair to say that that dog has other issues besides the peeing on the carpet. And if I know what those things are because I have talked to people, I've gotten that information, I've, I know what those behavioral issues are. When I segue into my paid offer, I can also call those other issues out. And I can call those out in inside the free thing that they receive, whatever that is. Or I can call that out in the email series that I will follow up with them on after they get the thing that they've opted in for. So this is a future conversation, but you're going to want to have an email series constructed that will go out over time that will introduce those other issues that your paid offer solves. Okay, so you want but before you create that first thing, you want to know where is this leading my audience to my new subscriber to where am I leading them to? That's something that is paid. Okay, so you want to look at what are you currently selling? Maybe you have a book on how to deal with pet behavioral issues, or maybe you teach watercolor painting. And one of the issues that you've noticed your students complain about is that they feel like that their technique has their paintings look like cartoons and not realistic fill in the blank. So if you can give them a strategy on how to do that, but then you have a more in-depth watercolor painting course that goes into a whole lot of other areas that would be of interest to them, then you want to reverse engineer that free offer, your irresistible freebie to your irresistible paid offer. So you want to ask yourself, what am I selling? This could be a book. It could be a course. It could be a paid service. It doesn't have to be a digital product. It could be for a paid service. Whatever it is, that free offer has to set that paid offer up so that it makes sense that it segues into that automatically and you're not you're not talking about one issue in the free offer and then something completely different in the paid offer. They have to segue so that it makes sense that this would be part this what you solved is part of the problem. Now you want to give them the whole the whole thing. And you want your paid offer to be that thing. Okay. Again, your free offer must ultimately lead to your paid offer. Now, if you don't have a paid offer yet, I would extend an invitation for an experience that you can set up that will allow you to engage with your new subscribers. And one of the best ways or fastest ways online to do this is some kind of a potential Facebook group. Facebook groups, again, some people use them for short-term promotion. Some use them as a long-term conversation. If you don't have anything ready to sell or you're not sure what that is and you still want to stay on the research side of things, 
this the Facebook group option could be a good point for you because what you can do in the Facebook group is, okay, they opt in for whatever your free offer was that you gave them. The invitation then in your follow-up emails is to go and join you in your Facebook group. In that group, you can then start to ask more in-depth questions, still keep inviting people to get on the phone with you. As you're getting people on the phone with you, you can then break those topics down or those, the things you learned and do individual video trainings inside of your Facebook group that then shares your expertise and addresses top of mind issues. And you can use that Facebook group as a way to create what I could call your beta, your beta program, which could be consultations. It could be a group situation. It could be the foundation or the beginnings of a course. Um, there's a lot of ways you can use this. So again, if you don't have anything ready to sell right now, I would set up a Facebook group and use it as a way to do a beta, to create a beta. Again, you, you want that back and forth engagement. You need that back and forth engagement. Otherwise, you're making it up. So, you know, you can put short videos in there. You can ask for feedback. You can take that feedback and then take it off of Facebook into direct message or take it out of the group into a direct message, which then could lead to a phone call, which then could lead to you creating more individual little mini trainings in order to figure out and stay really clearly. I want to create a program or I'm creating a program or I'm writing a book or I'm doing a course or whatever the case may be. Call it out. Don't be transparent. Say what you're doing and then say, I want to use the, the conversation in this group to help me build that. And those people, people in the group could be your first customers for your paid offer. So if you don't have something for free, I mean, something already for sell, consider a Facebook group. Um, now, I would mention this, you can do, well, one option you could do too, is you also could offer a paid online workshop, but I would only do this after I've been gathering some information. And the number one thing, bar none, before I go any further with this, you want to, you, the people have to be engaging with you. If you're posting and they're not commenting, if you're, you know, engage, writing things and they're not answering questions, then there's already a disconnect and you don't want to keep going into trying to create something to sell. If you don't have that engagement, they must be engaging with you. And that's why I think that doing live video inside your group is so important. You can run live video inside of your Facebook group on the Facebook app directly on your phone, or you can use a tool called Zoom, which can let you run your video conferencing into your Facebook group. But I would keep it as simple as possible right now and just run the video through your phone inside your group on your Facebook app. That's what I would personally do. Another option is Instagram, but I think Facebook is a little bit more set up for this than Instagram, in my opinion, although you can do a lot with DMs as well in Instagram. Again, the goal being is every step of the way, you're giving them little mini quick wins. The more that you give them that, they feel like they're really getting something from their exchange with you, the more you're setting up the opportunity for them to potentially purchase whatever your ultimate paid or product or service will be. And you can use these same principles if you already have a paid product that's ready to go. If you don't, I mean, let's say if you already have a paid product ready to go, you can still use this Facebook group model in order to be able to engage, answer questions, address issues, get the back and forth engagement. And then one of your live presentations that you do could then be an invitation to purchase the paid product. So that's a way that you can use, um, you can use Facebook groups to sell your already existing paid product if or service, if you already have one, but that's another way to do it if you don't, as a way to do continue to do research. And you, who knows, you may find out in the group that there's areas that your paid product or service is missing that you can then add. So again, this information is more than more than valuable to you, and I highly recommend that you um, explore that. Alrighty, so. Um, I want to give you a little bit of context for all of this. You know, I, about the whole concept of quick wins and why they're so important. No one wants more information for the sake of getting information. Information means nothing if no action is taken behind it. 
So I really, as you're planning this and as you're constructing this and getting your mind around this, I really want you to take some time to really focus on as you're creating everything free or paid. How can I give a quick, valuable win here? How can I give a quick, valuable win here? What's one little thing I can give them that's going to feel like it's valuable to them to having had that information? If you set everything up in that way, you move the needle far closer to them purchasing the thing that you're offering for sale. If it's just information for the sake of information with no context around it, that leads to something that they can personalize and use in their life. It's just information for the sake of information. And it's usually forgotten about. And if that's what you're putting out, you along with it. So what has to happen every step of the way, a quick win needs to be built into what you're doing. Now, as I mentioned in this in this episode, I am sending an invitation to connect with me on Instagram. And you can do that and you can DM me what you've been writing out as a result of these questions I'm asking you. And I'm going to give you an answer. And I may even give you some coaching around it that can help you then take this information further. So that's my way of providing you with a possible quick win. You see, that's an example of it. And so like, I don't necessarily have a structured paid pro program for this, but I am putting something together that I'm going to be talking about in future episodes. But I, before I get there, I want to start communicating with you now. So again, I'm extending the invitation, connect with me on Instagram, DM me, I will respond back and I love to over deliver. <laughs> so I've known for that. So I will definitely give you an answer and some suggestions and ideas that you probably aren't even thinking about. I get really inspired by that. So I say, take advantage of me in that respect <laughs> and do that. DM me and, you know, let me know what you're thinking about, what you're coming up with. And let me give you some support that can help you get that, move that needle closer to where you want to go. Okay. I want to leave with this uh, Stanford professor and behavioral expert B.J. Fogg explains the concept of easy wins, which I really like. He said for people to be motivated to continue pursuing any action, they need to experience a set of immediate and observable wins. And I'll read that again for people to be motivated to continue pursuing any action. They need to experience a set of immediate and observable wins. Not just the low hanging fruit, but the lowest, juiciest, most immediately satiating fruit. In other words, they need to feel so much value for the thing that you gave them for free that it wows them in such a way that they would go, I've just got to find out whatever the next thing is because they got so much value of what you gave them for free. So I want to address something here, which actually I wasn't planning on talking about, but I'm going to address it here really quick um, around what some people might call the poverty mentality or poverty consciousness. What I sum it up in this context is I don't want to give them too much for free because they won't buy anything that's paid. And I'm going to say to that, to really check yourself with that and rethink that, because this is what the deal is. People in every situation Almost in all the things that we do, we usually will always buy more once we've sampled something than if we have not had it at all. We have to have that visceral experience of something before we can inherently get the innate value and in what something is to us. And the more that that person is searching for a solution to an issue or a desire or craving that they really have, and they're looking to get that satiated, like the low-hanging fruit. The more that you can give them a taste of that, just like if you go to a farmer's market and most people, if they're selling fruit, they will slice or cut up an apple or whatever the fruit is and let you taste it. And by you tasting it, you weren't even planning on even probably buying the fruit that you are now walking home with a bag of fill in the blank, apples, peaches, whatever the case may be. So letting them taste it, the lowest, the juiciest, the most immediately satiating fruit, the chances are far greater that they're going to want 
to buy the thing that you're offering for sale. So don't let the fear that if I give this away, they're not going to want to buy anything else. Don't let that make decisions for you because that's from coming from a place of scarcity. From a place of service and giving because the right people are going to buy. Of course, there are going to be someone out there that are freebie seekers and that's all they want. But I can tell you right now that Every person probably listening has a hard drive full of downloadable somethings that they've gotten that they never used. And it's not the responsibility of the person to have done something with it per se. It's the responsibility of the person who gave you the thing to engage you, to invite you, to continue to present to you the lowest, juiciest, most immediately satisfying fruit. In other words, that win. It's their responsibility to take what you what you downloaded and keep presenting how they can you how you can use this to get a win and keep presenting that in such a way that then it makes it a no brainer that you would want to buy. So I'm going to leave you with that. And uh, because again, we're going to talk about more about the ideal customer avatar next week as it relates to picking your niche. And we're going to talk about niche in a different way than you might have heard about talking about niches. I recently did a training with um, an online, big online marketer. I'll mention his name in next week's episode and keep it as a surprise. So you'll come back and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how choosing a niche and why some people resist picking a niche. Actually, it's a big lie that people have bought into and why they don't choose to niche and actually how it could potentially hurt you uh, as you're choosing what you're going to create and how you're putting it all together. So I want you to come back for episode 19 coming out on the 30th of July, I believe, uh, and get all the goods on that. In the meantime, I've also got a list of resources available in the show notes, which you can go get at episode uh, get paid for your creativity.com forward slash zero one eight for episode 18. Uh, several things I've referenced in this podcast episode, those links will be there inside of those show notes. And so I f- believe that's all I really have for you today. So again, check, uh, go listen to that, check out the show notes, look at those questions. I have everything listed on the show notes. Please, 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 I invite you to take advantage of me. Take advantage of a, of a possible quick, valuable win. Message me on Instagram. Share with me the answers that you're coming up with to the questions I've asked you. Let me give you some support. And then let's connect again next week on next week's episode of the podcast. So with that said, um, thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you on episode 19. Have a good week. Take care. Bye-bye.